Okay, today we're going to be going over the generalized hyperbolic stretch function that's new to this version of Ciro 1.2.0, currently in beta 2 at a time of recording. This has been a long time coming for me. I've been putting this off for a few weeks only because I want to be able to give you guys a, a not a basic understanding, but not like a, an expert understanding. And to be honest with you, I am not the expert on this stuff either. So somewhere in the middle to give you an idea of what is actually happening when you're making these adjustments. I didn't want to make this video something where you would load up an image and say, look, just move sliders around until you like it and then be done trying to give you the understanding of what i have of how the tool works right now again i'm not the expert on it so i'm open to any and all comments so you guys have better techniques again I, one of the things i like about this channel is is a lot of people get together in the comment section and we all discuss and share ideas and it helps us all grow together well, this is one of the really cool new features in the tool i'm really excited about it it's right up there with the starnet stuff that they put out so let's get to it my name is rich and you're watching deep space astro Okay, at time of recording, I'm using Ciro 1.2.0 Beta 2, and I'm just going to open up a stack that I have already done a cropping on, background extraction, photometric color calibration, and remove the green noise. Currently, we're in the auto stretch view down here. So the first thing we're going to do is take it back into linear. So that's what the image actually looks like currently. Before we jump into the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation, I'm going to come into the histogram transformation just to talk about the histogram itself for a little bit. And we're just going to apply an auto stretch so we can actually see our histogram. So uh, just real quick, I know some of you already know this, but for those of you that don't, the histogram represents the data in the image. And it's actually the distribution of each of the pixels brightness as we go up to these peaks and slopes. The darkest areas are over on the left and the brightest areas are over on the right. And as we're stretching, and this is just uh, the auto stretch again, the linear stretch. If I was to move the darks over, you can see the image is getting darker. We're losing data because we're cutting it off to the left side of the image. So again, in a nutshell, that's, that's what we're looking at. This just represents the brightness of the pixels. Left side is the dark, right side is the brights, and the middle is our midtones. So I'm going to reset that and close it because we don't want to stretch using that. But we do want to go up in the image processing and generalize hyperbolic stretch transformations. So again, we're going to talk a little bit more about the, the histogram and how these controls stretch it and how you can actually read and determine what's happening here because you're going to be watching the histogram as you're doing your stretching as well as the image. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to set my symmetry point to 0.5 and that'll put it right in the middle. And I could do the same thing just by clicking right in the middle. If you watch this 0.5, you'll see when I click in the middle, it's close, right? 0.49. So you can do it by clicking on the histogram in the middle, or you can just type in the 0.5. Um, we're going to bring our local stretch all the way over, and then we're going to use the stretch factor. And we'll talk about these more, but again, I just want to show you what's going on here. This diagonal line from the bottom left to the top right is your plot line. When it's straight like this, corner to corner, it's indicating that there's no stretching that has been performed. As we start moving the stretch, you can see what's happening. We're getting that S curve. And this S curve is the reason why a lot of times before we had GHS in Cyril, we would apply an auto stretch like I showed you previously. And then once we were done, we would take it over into Photoshop or GIMP and start applying S curves. That's what this is. And if you notice right in the center is where this curve ends and this curve starts so that's our symmetry point right here at 0.5 you can faintly still see the diagonal line behind it which is showing you where you started from and this is where you're going to end up and if we kept stretching you're not going to see anything happen in the back of the image here yet because we're right in the middle we still need to get all of our data is still crammed over on the left. If I was to move my symmetry point one way or the other, if you watch, we move this out like this, if you watch where our center point is now, our symmetry point is now, and if I go to the left, you can see how I'm moving the symmetry point and it's affecting that curve. If I go to the right, it's gonna go the other way. And what it's doing, if we go back to the center, everything, again, referencing this diagonal line, from this point to this point, we're going up above the line. So it's increasing the brightness at the brightest parts of our images. Where, where over on this side, where it's dipping down below, it's decreasing the brightness of our darkest parts of the image. 
So we're going to reset this for now, and we're going to go through how I've been stretching with the new tool. Stretch. So again, we can barely see that our data is all the way over here on the left. So to be able to see that, we have zoom controls right now. Right now, we're in a one-to-one, -one, which is what this number one button is doing for us. We can go up as high as 100. So we're going to take it up to 100. So now we can see all of our data. And then we're going to come over to our local stretch intensity. And we're going to bring that all the way over to the right, 15, the max. And we'll slide this out of the way a little bit. We're just going to take our top slider, our stretch factor. And we're going to start moving this over. And just like I was showing you with the diagonal line where it shows you the start and end point, we're seeing right here with this dim display of the histogram where we started from then obviously this is where we're at right now so we just want to start sliding this over to the right watching our image and as we start stretching we no longer need our zoom to be this high so let's reset our zoom by hitting the number one button and then we're going to continue on with our stretch again you can see as the histogram is coming over our image is starting to appear we can be pretty aggressive with this first one. You know, you can go as high as you want. Generally, it's usually pretty good, I found anyways, to get it to the point where you can start seeing it. You don't want to go too much because you'll also be bringing out any noise that would be in the background as well. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to hit apply. And then the next thing you notice, since the histogram slid over to the right, we have this area on our shadows um, off of the left edge before it starts. So I like to come up into the type of stretch, change it from the, from the GHS and go down to linear stretch, BP for black point stretch, and just move this slider over so we get the beginning of this histogram over to the left edge of our display. And you'll notice the image will start getting darker as we do this as well. So right about there is good. We're going to hit apply come back up, go back to our generalized hyperbolic transform and kind of go back and forth with this. We have this view here, then we also have the logarithmic scale. And what this is showing you, ultimately the, the best thing to try to do, and it's it can be very difficult, is your peak from your peak all the way down this angle should be, you know, how this, this part of the histogram right now is relatively straight. But then we've got these humps and valleys that go up to the peak. The humps represent we need less contrast and the valleys represent we need more contrast. To get the best possible stretch, you should strive to try to get that line nice and straight. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's difficult to do. I have gotten close before, but I've never actually gotten a nice, relatively straight line all the way across it. But I just wanted to point it out to go back and forth on, on either side of these. So what we can do at this point is we're going to be playing with our symmetry point and our local stretch intensity. I already explained what the symmetry point was. Our local stretch intensity is brightness for the con the max contrast that we can add into the image. You come over into your logarithmic scale again, and you can see where we're dropping, we've got this little valley. If you come up right to the top of the peak and go right to the left and click, that'll set our symmetry point for us. And then we can start doing a little bit more stretching to get this over and you'll see it's brightening up and then using your local stretch intensity to add or remove one way or the other contrast. And depending how the image is looking, it's, you know, it's a little bit washed out. You can come over to the right side of the histogram and click to set your symmetry point. And then again, to slowly start doing the stretch. You want some more contrast where you can put some more contrast in. If you're not exactly happy with where that symmetry point is creating that S curve, go ahead and move the slider around. You can see if I go to the right, it's moving it back to the left. So it's giving us a little bit more darker contrast because of the symmetry points being moved. And now I'm brightening up the center of it because of the, the, the different point of the curve. So the other way that you can set your symmetry point besides typing in the number or just using the slider or clicking on the histogram is right on your image. So for example, if I wanted to work, I'm bringing out some more detail in this area. I can use my left mouse button, hold it down and draw a selection area around there come over and hit my eyedropper tool and that will set my symmetry point. And then again, I can start moving and going back and forth with my stretch factor and my local stretch intensity. So now that we can, now we got a good view of our histogram, let's talk about the buttons down here right below it. So red, green, and blue, as you may expect, these are your channels. So I could, if this wasn't color calibrated, for example, I could turn off my green 
and my blue, and I'm left with just my red, and I could, in fact, stretch just the red. So the same thing with any of the colors. I can select any one, two, or all of them. But I think that's probably not something you would be using that much. That's going to be, again, if you, if you weren't correctly color calibrated. This button right here will turn on and off our grid that we're looking at. So if I hit it once, it's off. Back on. This one will show us our plot line or take it away for us. And then this one will actually um, show us the pre-stretch histogram. So if I turn that one off and I start stretching, I just see the stretch. I don't see the faint histogram where it was before I started. If I hit it on now, it comes back. So let's reset those settings. So I'm going to hit apply for that one right now and talk a little bit about our types of stretch and our color stretch model. I already showed you obviously the GHS. We already went over the linear. We also have an inverse generalized hyperbolic transform form. So again, just to play around, if I put the symmetry point back to 0.5 and I started a stretch, you can see my S curve starts up above and then dips down below at our symmetry point. If I come up and I do the inverse, it'll flip it around the other way. So it's a nice way sometimes if if one side or the other got a little bit away from you, you can do an inverse GHS to try to, try to, to correct for that. Uh, let's hit reset again. Go back to 0.5. We also have our modified arc sign transform. This is more of a stretch along the contrast of the image. And you can use all these in combination with each other. The important thing is, is you're not going to be, that you don't clip any of your darks off the left side of the image. That's losing data that you just won't get back once you hit apply. But we can do a little bit of an arc sign just so you can see the effect that it has on there, depending on where the symmetry point is. Like I said, you can play with each of these to get different results. Every piece of data is going to be different. You know, this is kind of a good starting point. In this video, I'm not really trying to show you how you should be stretching. I'm trying to hopefully give you an understanding of how this tool works against a histogram and then what your image looks like after that histogram is stretched a certain way. So we're going to reset that and then we'll talk about our color stretch model. And I'm going to close this and reopen this image back in its linear state so I can demonstrate about our color stretch models. Okay, so we're back to the linear state for this image. I did the same thing I did last time. I set my symmetry point just to the left of the peak of the histogram and going to start to stretch. And what you'll notice, see if I can't get zoomed up on these stars. And what you notice with your stars, when you're in the independent channel values, they'll start to bleach out. You'll lose the color. So if you're stretching an image with the stars, which is one way of doing it, you could also use the star tools that we have in this version and make a starless version stretch that and then stretch your stars separately and then combine them back together but if you're doing it all in one like this or if you're just doing your star mass the same thing applies with the independent channel values on the stars you're going to start bleaching out the colors if you want to bring them back one or two either human weighted or even weighted luminance will allow you to stretch with the colors to come back. So if you will go back up to the independent and you know look at this star right here for, as an example. And when I drop down to human, you'll see my color comes back. So it's a way, it's a better way to stretch when you have stars in your image or if you've broken them out into two images and you're working on your star mask. So let's go through and stretch this image the, the best that I can is the, to see what, what kind of an end result we get. So I am, again, because since I still have the stars in this image, I'm going to use the generalized hyperbolic. I'm going to leave it on the human weighted luminance, keep the star colors intact for the most part. We're going to set the symmetry point at the peak just to the left. And then we're going to stretch until we see the image. Reset my zoom so I can see my histogram. I'm going to click apply. And then I'm going to come up to my linear stretch to adjust my black point. Get that slid over. And we'll come back up to generalize hyperbolic transform. And then I'm going to choose, instead of picking on the histogram, I'm going to come over and I'm going to draw selections around where I want my symmetry point to be. And start stretching, see what kind of result that I get. And you can see it's brightening my object, but it's not touching the background that much, which is what I want at this point. 
and click apply and then i'm going to get a little bit of the darker areas like right here in the center which should also lighten the background for me set that as my symmetry point just slowly move that up take the local stretch down just a little bit apply again and I'm going to come over to the histogram this time, and I'm going to put my symmetry point right to the right of the histogram. And again with the stretch, add some more contrast to bring the whole histogram over a little bit. It's probably getting a little bit too dark. So if I play with the symmetry point, you can see as I'm moving it, to move it over to the left a little bit, so I don't like the background being super dark. And then some of this faint area down here, I'm going to highlight that and select that for my symmetry point. And that should help me lift some of the nebulosity out of the back there. And then we have our shadow protection point and our highlight protection point. Keep in mind, you can only go as far as your symmetry point when you're adjusting these. So right now we're at point one nine three six seven. If I was to slide my shadow protection over, that's the number that it'll stop at. You won't be able to go any further than that. And the shadow protection point is giving you the protection to prevent at this symmetry point from clipping into your shadows and the high point same thing we go down but we can't go any lower than our symmetry point is set so you can see that number is also there as well that protects your highlights just like the one above it here protects your shadows so you know i think i overstretched this it looks a little bit too bright for me but this is where we can go in and we can do the inverse right so we can come in the, the inverse generalized hyperbolic transform Let's go to the right of the histogram, start stretching it over. You can see our lines going down below our plot line. It's dimmed down the brightest areas of the nebula for us. So that just about covers how to use a new GHS tool. Well, hopefully you guys come away from this video with some good knowledge on how to use GHS. Did my best to try to explain it without going too crazy and getting too technical and taking the fun out of it. Uh, just like a lot of other things, just play with it, experiment with it. Every set of data is going to be different most of the time. Again, any comments, leave them below. If you found the video helpful, Give it a like, share it. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow. As always, I appreciate everybody's time. We'll see you on the next video in clear skies.